Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of ABAP Explained. In today's video, I want to focus on getting the information about uh, data types with ABAP. So if I want to read, for example, the description of a data element, I want to read the list of the fields of a structure or get the key values of a um, table type, um, I'm going to show you how you can do it. Um, first, I'm going to focus just on examples, how you can do it for those who want a quick solution, and then I'm gonna explain the whole code. Uh, so to start with, um, I have prepared these three variables. One is a table type, one is a structure, and one is a data element of char one, I believe. And if you want to get any information, you're gonna need to start with the CL ABAP type descriptor, type the DSCR uh, class, and use the method described by data. So describe by data is going to return you the value, uh, the reference to a uh, uh, class of the type of the element that you are passing here. So I can pass LV dummy, I can pass LS flights here, and I can pass here anything, and it's going to tell me, hey, this is the, a structure, or this is a, a table type, and so on. So we can uh, try this out. So we've got LV dummy. Let's do a hard breakpoint here and let's activate and run the code just so we can see. Let's run it. And as you can see, this has returned a reference to the CL ABAP element descriptor class. So we know that this is a data element. And using this class, we can now call some methods to get the information. So, for example, if you want to get the name of any data uh, type. So this goes for table types, uh, structures, and data elements. Let's say I'm uh, preparing a variable alpha name, and I'm going to use this reference to get the uh, name. So get relative name. And now if I activate, maybe let's just use the write operator so it's easier just for showcase purposes. And the name of this type is dummy, as you can see. If I pass here LT partners, it's going to be no problem for this one. So, okay, so this one doesn't have a name because it's a uh, made up internal table. So it doesn't have one. But if I use LS flights, it's going to return the name as flight. Uh, so that's uh, how we can read the name. Now, for example, you want to need the list of the fields that are in a structure. So let's do data LT uh, field, field list, let's say. Um, we're going to use the same thing. So first, you get the, uh, in this case, it's going to be a structure descriptor. And I want to use this, and I want to call the method to get the list of the fields. But if I do this, I only get the methods of the class CLABAP type descriptor. So there is no um, method that gets me all the fields. This method is hidden in the sub uh, class of the type descriptor class. So if we go to the package of this name, you're going to see a list of classes, which are used to get the information about any data type, classes, and so on. In our case, we are focusing on CLAB type descriptor, which is if you open the tree and go into subclasses, you're going to see uh, two classes. In our case, CLAB data descriptor is in interesting. And there are more sub subclasses, complex structures, uh, again, subclasses, and you can see here are the uh, classes for the structures and for the tables. So if I want to get information about a structure, get the methods to, uh, to use, we're going to need to use the cast operator to do that. Uh, so why do we need the cast operator? We want to tell the program, now I want you to give me the class that has the methods of this CLAB abstract descriptor. Why is that? If we go to this method described by data, 
that returns our uh, information about uh, a reference about the data type you can see in the parameters it's returning a syllabub type descriptor but if we use the cast operator we can tell this method to um, always return a structure uh, a reference to this class we can tell it to always return this this class and if you don't do that you're not going to have access to the methods of this class in this place because in this moment uh, the ABAP compiler doesn't know you're gonna you're using a structure here it just allows you to use the standard methods of the CLABAP type descriptor so you can get the relative name and so other, some other things so if I use the cast operator I will need to pass the mm, type that I'm gonna return so in my case it's gonna be CLABAP struct descriptor and the parameter is this whole uh, method that returns or the reference to this type. So now uh, the ABAP program knows I'm re returning this structure type. So I can use this method. And when I press control space, it gives me um, access to some methods. And if we go with a double click to this class, you can see that the method that I'm looking for is the get didic field list. Uh, with control space, it's definitely here. Get didic exactly field list, control space, control tab. It's giving me automatically all the para parameters that I um, that might be passed to this method. I don't want to pass any, so I'm just gonna delete this. And by activating this, passing a breakpoint again we're going to get a list of all fields of the structure. And as you can see, if I double click, there's going to be a table with 14, in this case, 14 uh, fields. So we've got the table name, which is in reality the structure name and the field of the structure. Uh, it's going to show the language, some other interesting information, the domain, the length of the fields, Mm, what's interesting for us might be the uh, descriptions for every mm, type, so the short description, long description, and so on. Mm, so that's how you can get those values. You can also get the information if a field is uh, considered a, a key in this structure. So for example, this for R, where in a structure you don't have really keys, but if it's a table type, you're gonna have those four keys and so on and so on. So many interesting informations through here. And to go a bit deeper, let's say, for example, I'm interested in the um, currency uh, field. So this one is gonna deliver the list. And now I'm telling it to uh, please give me the a field with the uh, and now I'm not sure what was the field name so let's go again and the field name is <laughs> field name <laughs> okay so I'm just saying uh, LT field list this table please give me the field name or the let's say we want to get the description so field name needs to be uh, currency and I want to get the field uh, let's say I'm not sure what was it again <laughs> let's see if there was the description of what was it it's the field text it's the base description so it's the field text uh, Mm -mm. I'm missing something dot yeah I'm not adding it to any variable so let's say I want to mm, pass it to a variable description currency and let's write the variable and you get the description of the currency field so 
local currency of airline. And that's how you can read the information about those fields, as I said. And that's the base level, so you won't probably need any more information if you just want to <laughs> get this description or key field information, so on and so on. That's all you need to know. And one more thing that would be interesting maybe for you is also this part of code, which I have commented down here, or maybe not commented. So how we get the type. If you'd only want to know the type of a, a variable, you're going to use this one. So it's also the CLA type descriptor described by data. It's basically the same, but it's got an attribute type kind. So the v1 variable, uh, it was declared. So let's say v4. And then we want to write v4. It's going to write me the type h, which you don't know what it is, because uh, <laughs> why would they use an h for a table type? If you double click on type kind, it's an attribute um, of this uh, class. But if you go, uh, you can see that uh, there are constants telling you what letter is what type. So for example, uh, if we had an h, so the h would be an internal table. So that's right. So if you use this uh, uh, constant to check, so you can do like a check. If is this type a table type, you use then this operation. So you create a case operator. And for example, if this, uh, you get this type here and case, uh, case kind. If this type is a char or a string, so in this case, it's going to be a data element, do something with the data element. Maybe give me the description. If it's a structure of type 1 or one, uh, type 2, not sure what those types, uh, what the differences are, you're going to do some operations on a structure type. If it's a, a table type, maybe you want to read the keys with the method. And there was some method. If I go to type descriptor, maybe here, table descriptor. You've got this method, get keys. But it's only going to give you the keys of the internal table. So in my case, it's just default key. So yeah, but you might want to use that. OK, so I have cleaned up. And let's see um, on another example, how do we get some information about a data, data element, let's say. So to start with. I'm going to create a local object, local reference to the uh, element descriptor. Uh, I'm going to use the cast operator because I know exactly what type I am uh, going to refer to. So I'm referring to a data element, so the class would be clabop element descriptor. And as a parameter, I'm passing the return value of the clabop type descriptor, which tells me what type I am referring to, type descriptor. The method is described by data. And as a parameter, we are passing the variable that we want to know the information about. If the uh, method has only one parameter, importing parameter, we, don't, we can skip the name and just pass the variable. Uh, so now this is going to get me a reference of this class. And to get information about uh, the data element, let's do structure ls uh, element list, or maybe ls description list, or whatever, and call the method get didic field. And this is a method of this class. The syllabub type descriptor doesn't have this mm, method. So now, Control space, it's going to give me the possible uh, parameters. And uh, if we double click on this method, we can see that it's returning as parameter um, the structure that has many information about this data element. Um, so, for example, we want to know the domain name. 
here I get the structure and I can just uh, write the name of this variable. Like that. So activate. And as you can see, uh, dummy is also the domain name of this uh, data element. So now I'm going to activate and uh, show this in uh, the debugger. So we've got a reference to the syllab element descriptor. We've got the list of the uh, mm, components of this data element. So we've got data type, uh, how is the length, and so on, the description, if you are interested. And yeah, that's uh, how this works. That's pretty easy, I would say. So again, if you know the type that you will get, use the cast operator with the exact type. If you don't know it, uh, you don't need to do it, but you then only have access to the type descriptor methods. So you can, for example, get the name and yeah, some other properties. And if you know the type, uh, or maybe if you don't know the type, you can create a custom method, custom function, where you first read the type, and then uh, using case or if else, you can do operations on your data elements. So if I know that it's a data element, I'm going to use inside here this one. If it's structure, then I'm going to do structure descriptor. If it's a table type, I'm going to do table type descriptor. So table structures. So yeah, the names are correct. Mm, and so on. So maybe just for struct descriptor and table descriptor, and then call any methods of uh, those classes. Yeah, so that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, maybe it was, uh, hope it wasn't too confusing. Mm, if you enjoyed, leave a like, leave a subscription, a comment, maybe for future videos, what would you like to see? And I see you next time. Thanks.